Hi, this is Judith Karakshuni and Manos Brilakis, and this is case 182 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of combined use of orbital atherectomy and lithotripsy for treating a right coronary artery CTO. The patient was an elderly gentleman with previous coronary bypass graft surgery who had recurrent failure of a saphenous vein graft to the PDA and was referred for the canalization of the native right coronary artery. This is the angiography of the native right coronary artery. It is occluded distally, right proximal to a previously placed stent. It does have a clear proximal cap. The length was about 30 millimeters, the length of the stent. There was flow going from the saphenous vein graft to the PDA, and the distal vessel was good, but there was a bifurcation on the distal cap. Our plan was to try with undergrade wiring first. If it didn't work, undergrade the sexual reentry, but re-entering before the bifurcation, and then if that did not work, to go retrograde through the saphenous vein graft. We used a turnpike with the Pilot 200. We did advance the microcatheter very close to the tip of the guide wire, and eventually we were able to advance the wire through the occlusion all the way into the right posterior lateral branch. We cannot advance a balloon, but uh, we were able to advance the turnpike again all the way to the right posterior lateral. And then after doing that, we decided to perform a therectomy and we changed the pilot for a Viper Flex tip to do orbital atherectomy. We did multiple runs of orbital atherectomy throughout the right coronary artery, all the way from the proximal to the distal. And then we did have some restoration of undergrade flow all the way to the posterior lateral. There was some competitive flow in the PDA from the saphenous vein graft. The saphenous vein graft did have a 90% stenosis at the ostium. We went back to the native right coronary artery and tried to cross with a 2.0 millimeter balloon, but unfortunately we were not able to cross. And uh, uh, eventually we did use a guide extension and were able to advance a 3.0 millimeter balloon to the mid RCA. But uh, the lesion in the mid right coronary remained balloon undilatable. Despite going high pressures, 26, 28 atmospheres, we were unable to expand this lesion. So what to do for this balloon and dilatable lesion? We did use um, a orbital atherectomy crown again and performed a repeat, uh, as a repeat uh, modification of the mid-right coronary artery, but still we were unable to expand with a 3.0 millimeter balloon. We eventually did lithotripsy with a 3.0 by 12 millimeter shockwave balloon and then uh, entire the mid through the mid right coronary artery, and then we used a non-compliant balloon again, and finally the balloon now expanded. So this is an example where one modality orbital atherectomy did not work, but then using also intravascular lithotripsy did result in successful expansion of the lesion, and uh, this was also shown by intravascular ultrasound that showed that the entire lesion, including the mid segment and the proximal segment, were well expanded. We then placed dragoluting stents all the way from the distal PDA posterior lateral bifurcation uh, in the mid RCA, 38 millimeter stents, and then a third one all the way to the right coronary ostium. Those were postilated with a 3.5 millimeter NC balloon, and this gave a nice final result with TME3 flow in the right coronary artery. We still, however, had uh, some competitive flow from the saphenous vein graft. What to do next? There are some concerns that if you have competitive flow, you might uh, run a risk of stent thrombosis in the native vessel within the recently placed stents. So we decided to occlude the saphenous vein graft. This can be done using either an unplatter vascular plug or using coils. In this particular case, we decided to use coils. We delivered a microcatheter. This is a lantern microcatheter through which we delivered a 3.0 penumbra pod. And then after delivering that, uh, we were able to deliver a 60 centimeter long ruby packing coil. And uh, this is how it looked, but unfortunately there was still slow flow into the um, right coronary artery. So had to place additional coils and eventually we did achieve occlusion of the saphenous vein graft.
This took about three hours, 70 minutes of fluoro, 2.2 gray, and 215 ml of contrast. And this is again the final result with good flow into the right coronary artery. Lessons from this case. The first one is that before placing stents in severely calcified lesions, one needs to make absolutely certain that the lesion is well expanded. In this case, orbital atherectomy did not result in full expansion of the mid-right coronary artery. By then using intravascular lithotripsy, we were able to get good expansion with the balloons and the stents. And second, when there is comparative flow through a saphenous vein graft after recanalizing a native coronary CTO, occluding the SVG with coils, as in this case, or with unplugged or vascular plugs, might reduce the risk of stent thrombosis in the recently stented vessel. Thank you.